6.2 million. 6.2 million. That is the number of high school dropouts in 2008. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like an awfully large number to me. These people are not getting the education they need to live in today's society. The problem lies with teachers. The affirmative believes that teachers are made and not born. There is no excuse as to why teachers in the public schools of America perform like this. Money, according to the negative, is the excuse. It's unacceptable. Resolved that the United States federal government should enact a policy, policy to significantly improve the quality of all teaching in, in all public schools via one or, more, one or more of the following areas. Compensation, tenure, job security, teacher training, certification, and evaluation. We, the affirmative, propose that the U.S. federal government modify its rules for tenure, add student evaluations to current administrator evaluations of teachers, and institute a medical residence type teaching program. The major, issue, the major issue facing education reform today is that teachers cannot be let go. Bad teachers cannot be let go. Even when a teacher has proven to be a poor performer in the classroom, they are not let go. For example, in Denver, Colorado, zero teachers were let go for cause, in, according to a 2008 by McKinsey, or a report in 2008 by McKinsey and Co. Zero teachers. Now, unless Denver, Colorado is performing at 100% and uh, performing extremely well on national tests, which it's not, then somewhere there are some teachers that are the problem. In New York, 3 out of 30,000 teachers were let go for cause, according to the same report. No. Even if a te today, even if a teacher is recognized by a school district as a poor performer, they are not let go, as any action to reform the bad, bad teachers is met with tough resistance from the local union. The local teacher union always brings the case to court, incurring heavy fees and lots of time loss. Case in point is the New York un teacher union head, Randy Weingarten, who would, quote, defend a dead body in front of the classroom. Now, who wants to be taught by a dead body? I don't think they teach too well. Also, districts will suspend teachers, but never outright let them go. This is just an empty salary that is a drain on the system. Again, referring back to the New York school system, is the, quote, rubber rooms. These are rooms where teachers who may have, who are underperforming, just go and sit, not teaching, just get paid to sit in a room. There's something wrong with this picture. We the affirmative propose that we adjust job security for teachers. In order to optimize our education system, we need to bring all teachers up to, sta up to standard. Some teachers are not as good as others. As such, they need help to become better. To accurately identify and deal with this problem, we propose a three-category system to be set up. Category number one is student evaluations that we will get into later. If a teacher is consistently scoring poorly on these evaluations, it's cause for concern. Also, if a teacher is consistently re poorly reviewed by their administrator observer two years in a row, this is cause for concern. Finally, if students are consistently performing poorly on state standardized tests, such as the Regents exam in New York, which is a standardized test in New York, this is cause for concern. We believe that if, if any, if two out of these three categories happen two years consecutively, the teacher is in trouble and must either go on mandatory leave or to a teaching seminar or to a teaching seminar or choose to leave the profession. <coughs> now, as I referred to earlier, we have a plan for a, a, an improved evaluation system. Currently, only school administrators such as Dr. Head Callahan or Dr. Rittenhouse come into the classroom and observe a teacher as they teach a class. Teachers are given a 24-hour notice ahead of time before these teachers come in. As I'm sure you and I have experienced, teachers will modify their lesson plans to seem more attractive to their observers. This is a problem. To rectify this problem, we propose that students, like you and me, in the high school level, uh, rate their teachers based on out at the end of the year. At the end of the year, an evaluation is given out for the students to complete, and the median, and so it's basically a score from 1 to 10. If a teacher is consistently scoring 7s, 8s, 9s, 10s, they're a good teacher. They're passing on the material. Teachers, uh, students respond positively, positively to them. And that's a good thing. That's a sign of a good teacher, when their students respect them. So, these teachers will be kept. However, as I referred to earlier in the plan, if these teachers are consistently scoring 1s, 2s, and 3s, their students are not learning from them, and they will, and as such, those teachers need reform. 
Finally, we have the issue of experience. New teachers don't know what to do when they enter a classroom for the first time. I ask you, how do you stop a kid from shoving a pencil up his nose? Or making fun of you for the merriment of his peers? Or blasting music from a boombox in the back of a classroom? Or all of these things happening at the same time? Can anyone tell me? I bet that you, like you, any aspiring teacher wouldn't know what to do. In fact, after interviewing a student, he remarked that a new math, math teacher here at our well-performing high school does not know how to control the classroom and as such is a terrible teacher. The way, the way to resolve this is to take a lesson from the medical industry, residence programs. For those of you who don't know, residence programs are when new doctors are sent into a hospital and basically put uh, behind more experience, observe more experienced doctors in their environment as they, as they do their job. Now, if teachers would do this, the, the good experience of the teachers would rub off them. Thank you and vote affirmative.